All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, recently, I did a test of the DeWalt dual action polisher. I have it right here, and I absolutely love this thing. Now, uh, this other polisher that we're gonna be looking at today, the Ryobi, um, has actually been on the market for quite some time. I've seen other uh, YouTube um, channels do reviews on it, and I wanted to get my hands on it. I just, I, I haven't been a Ryobi guy in the past. I don't have a bunch of Ryobi batteries, so I, it wasn't, it wasn't a clear choice for me to check out. Um, I am a DeWalt guy, so when this thing came out, I was like, perfect, I have a bunch of DeWalt batteries. But I really, really wanted to test out this Ryobi. So I, bu I bit the bullet, I went and bought the polisher. I also bought a drill that comes with two batteries because um, I needed that as well. So I figured I'll just start gathering some batteries. Those batteries that it came with are just one and a half amp hour batteries. Now Ryobi on, on their site, they do state that this polisher will get around a car, uh, get around a full car with a four amp hour battery. So obviously we're running quite a bit under that, but I don't know what they mean by getting around a whole car. Are they talking about just waxing it? Are they talking about doing a full correction? I don't know. Now, obviously if you're doing a full correction, it can be much longer and I doubt that it's gonna, you're gonna be able to get around it in one battery. However, it should be able to get a wax application done. Um, so what I'm gonna to do today is we're gonna open this thing up, we're gonna check it out, and then I have a test panel, we'll be testing that to see the correction abilities of this polisher. And then I've got my 1969 Ford Fairlane here. I'm gonna throw a coat of wax on it and we'll use this to do it, see how, how much I can get around using that one and a half amp hour battery. So um, again, guys, down the road, I may test it with bigger batteries because obviously that obviously that's going to last longer. But I just wanted to get an idea um, to be able to get through this as cheaply as possible. How how much uh, power and how much time I can get out of the one and a half one and a half amp hour battery. So let's go ahead and jump into it and open this guy up. All right. So first things first, let's just go ahead and get this unboxed. Now it's cool. It does come from what I found. I could only get tool only. I couldn't get one that comes with batteries, which was a bummer because I would have done that. Um, but it comes with the polisher and then it comes with some pads. So we'll check that out right off the bat. Uh, yellow pad. Whoa. Black pad and maroon pad. Instruction manual, warranty card, all that kind of good stuff. The polisher itself. Okay. Now it does look like it has a five inch backing plate. The throw, I don't know what the throw is. So I'm going to see if I can figure that out. We'll go ahead and check that out. Um, but we'll check that out in a second. And then the last things we have here are some, we have a wrench so you can actually get the backing plate off. It looks like it could be a pretty standard size backing plate. That was one thing with the DeWalt. Um, I really, really like the backing plate that it comes with because it has so much ventilation on it. Um, so that way it keeps the pad from heating up and, and heat disperses from the paint and all that kind of stuff, which is amazing. However, it is a completely different bolt-on pattern. So proprietary to DeWalt, um, you can't just replace these. You would have to get an other backing plate from DeWalt. This one worked really, really well, so I didn't have any issue with that. But um, just so you know, you guys can switch out the backing plates of this one much, much easier. So let's go ahead and uh, just look up the form factor of this first. Now, as you can see, it does start off nice and flat and then arches up at the back. Um, is that ergonomically comfortable? I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll, like, as, as I said, as I'm going around my uh, Ford Fairlane waxing it, I'll get an idea of that. However, I will say right off the bat, the little uh, head that you can hold on to is very comfortable. It's smaller than some of the other ones, um, but it's kind of nice. It actually fits in your hand really, really well. Now, the reason that I see why they put this big arch on this is because if they didn't, then the battery would be sticking out and you'd be hitting it as, you know, I, if this was straight, this part would be out here past where the pad goes, which doesn't work if you're working in tight areas. So it, se it seems to me that that's why they did that, um, which is fine. As long as it's comfortable, I'm totally cool with that. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about the overall design of this. Right on the back here, um, you have your power on and off switch. It's not super ideal for, I mean, I guess it's something you'd probably get used to, but if you just push up, it's kind of stuck. You have to push down first and then up and then, and then continue that upward motion to push this top part in and it holds in place. And then when you want to release, just push the bottom and it'll turn off. So I don't know, not, not the best design for me. I really like 
like with the Max Shine M15 Pros, which is a corded polisher, but it's my go-to corded polisher, as well as with the DeWalt um, cordless DA. Um, it's a variable speed trigger, which I much, much prefer. You can put it all the way up to the maximum um, oscillations per minute. Start it off slow, just decompress the, the trigger a little bit. It's gonna start off nice and slow. Compress it all the way, you're gonna get that maximum OPM. I prefer that method just because for me, as opposed to changing the dial down to, down to low, turning it on, spreading my product around, and then upping up the oscillations per minute, um, it's just, I, it's much more beneficial to have a uh, variable, variable speed trigger. However, this is much cheaper than, than um, the DeWalt is. Uh, and this is $199, I believe, and the DeWalt was $299, I think, so $100 more, I think, or maybe $50, $249 to $299, I can't remember. Um, so that's part, the, the trigger switch, not ideal for me. Next is the uh, power selector guide here, and it goes from 3000 to 7,500. Now, I'm a little bit confused here because on the website it showed RPM. I, I, I had seen RPM somewhere. Um, most dual action polishers are listed in OPM or oscillations per minute because it not only spins just in a rotation but it also oscillates. Um, however, on the box and on the guide here, it does show OPM. So I guess it is rated in oscillations per minute, but I, that still confuses me because this thing goes from 3,000 OPM to 7,500 OPM, uh, which is an extremely high oscillations per minute number. The DeWalt goes to 5,500. The Maxion, I think, goes to 5,200. The Rupes goes somewhere in there, right around 50, between 5,000 and 5,500, I think, somewhere in there. Um, so 7,500 oscillations per minute is a, is a high number. Is that gonna be accurate? I don't know. Um, It'll be interesting, interesting to see. I will just kind of test it and see what I think compared to those. I'll let you guys know. Um, and that is basically it on the design. Again, your, your selector is over here on your thumb, which while you're working, it's okay. It's okay, usually it's on the back, which I, again, it's just because I'm used to it, I prefer that. But this feels okay, it's in a good spot. Um, there's no tactile feel just slides right across, no sound, until you get to the very end to the 7500, and it clicks. It doesn't click off. Yeah, interesting. It clicks once you go up to it, but when you're backing off of it, it does not click again. So whatever that means, it's just how it is. They also give you a handle that you can put on the head. Personally, I don't use that, so I'm not gonna throw that on there. Um, it's just my preference, but it's really simple. It just bolts into these little side pieces here, so that way you can hold it in a different direction. For me, I always just use the little neck here, or, or the little head here, and just hold it that way. As far as resting this thing down, this is texturized up here, and then you have another texturized piece here. So when you lay it down, it's laying exactly on this texturized piece, uh, which is the same material as this one, so just to help keep everything together. Um, it will kind of, I would assume it's gonna scuff up your head, but maybe that material is pretty, pretty good. I don't know, we'll see. Again, really quickly on the back here, there's an oscillations per minute uh, guideline here. It says finishing 3,000, 3,800, correcting 4,800, 5,800, and cutting 6,800 to 7,500. Um, that's a little bit confusing for me as well because usually when you're correcting, you are cutting into the paint very lightly to, to smooth everything out and remove scratches. So correcting and cutting is kind of the same thing. I don't know, we'll test it out and see. Okay, now let's talk about the pads they give you. So again, they give you a yellow, a maroon, and a black. I'm gonna go ahead and open these up. They are extremely low profile, which I'm fine with. It looks to be like a five and a half to six inch pad with a five inch backing plate, so you can see it kind of overlays, which is nice. Um, let's see here. The black is definitely gonna be your finishing. It's very soft. The maroon. It's labeled as cutting. It doesn't feel that aggressive to me, but we'll see. And then yellow is, yeah, yellow is definitely in between, I would say. So we've got, it's labeled on the back as well. Black one is finishing, yellow is correcting, maroon is cutting. So again though, guys, honestly, the feeling between these two is very, very similar. And the porousness of the, of the uh, pad itself, the foam, 
it doesn't look very aggressive, which is probably a good thing. They're probably assuming that they're not selling these, they're, they're selling these to the average DIYer at home. They don't want to give you something so aggressive that you're going to have any issues. So that's fine. Will I use these pads? I'll test them out, but um, I don't think they're going to be my go-to at all. I will probably still use my standard pads, especially when I'm testing the correction abilities on the panel. I want to make sure that I'm giving it a fair shot and I'll use the pads and compounds that I'm used to using. Okay guys, so on top of the hook uh, holder that they give you, Allen wrench things to put that together, they also give you this little wrench here. And this is so you can actually remove the backing plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, and you just slide it under, there's a little, a little nut right under here, you slide it under, and then back off. There we go, the backing plate. Oop. So that's kinda nice, it looks like they already have a washer mod installed here. So you just put that there, it gives you a little bit more space between the pad and the actual piece here. Um, I'm trying to see just what the offset is of this polisher to find out is it a eight millimeter throw, 15 millimeter throw, et cetera. So let's go ahead and open this up um, a little bit more and I'm gonna check out, try and take some measurements. I don't know exactly which portion I'm gonna be measuring because I can't tell on this, but it should be from this point to the center point there. Okay guys, so I'm doing a little research here on the Buff Daddy website. Great resource if you guys ever have any questions on stuff. Um, but basically, in order to find out the stroke of the polisher, we have to figure out the offset, and then it's a, it's a duplicate of two on that. So offset times two equals the stroke. So we wanna measure between the two axis points um, of the polisher. So this is our backing plate axis point. This is where the backing plate sits. And then the drive shaft axis is right underneath here. And so from wherever that point is to this point is our actual offset. Um, so I'm gonna try and measure that. Obviously I can't access the, the, it exactly, so it's gonna be a rough estimate. Let me grab my measuring tape. All right, again guys, I just apologize for this. You do need to get it pretty centered. Um, I would guess for about seven and a half to eight millimeters um, from my estimation. And if that's the case, that's a, I, man. I don't know for sure. That would either be an eight millimeter uh, offset, which are we talking about an eight millimeter throw, or is it the stroke, which would be probably seven and a half, which would make it a 15 millimeter throw. Um, hard to tell. So what I'm gonna do real quick is actually, I'm gonna take um, one of my Max Shine machines, and I'm gonna go ahead and take off this backing plate and try and see how much different it is uh, in size, if I can even tell just by looking at it. So give me a second. Again, this polisher here, the Max Shine, is a 15 millimeter throw. So this will give us an accurate idea. Hmm. It's really hard to tell. Okay, so this is definitely a larger throw than this is. So. Whatever this is, eight, 10, 12 millimeter throw, it's definitely not a 15. This is, this is much larger of a throw. The offset is definitely larger than this guy is. You can see the counterweight on this thing is much more robust than the counterweight on this one. Um, so good to go there. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on. Again, guys, I apologize. I don't know exactly. I'm trying my best here to sort it out for you, but it's definitely not a 15. It's definitely smaller than that from what I'm seeing here. All righty guys, so here is my panel. This is the black door panel. I've done a couple of different tests on, um, but basically I'm gonna show you. So these three sections here have been corrected. Those are at least as much as this panel is gonna get. It, it was in an accident and the car is, this door is pretty beat up, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab my GoPro and I'm gonna hook up a light and show you guys. So as you can see there, Paint's looking good. Obviously there's some random deep stuff and everything else, but overall clarity is really, really nice. When we get down here, clarity's not so nice, right? Lots and lots of, of hazing and deeper scratches and things like that all the way through here. You can see some rub marks there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work the polisher in this section right here and see what we can achieve. So for this test, like I said, I'm correcting here. So I want to be as fair as I possibly can. I'm going to be using this pad here. This is a cutting pad. 
um, from Udos, Lake Country Udos. Um, I, these are kind of harder to find. You have to go to detail supply shops or um, detail specific sites. However, on Amazon, you can get the Rupez version, dual action polisher pads. It's a yellow pad and a blue pad. I can't remember the colors, but those work very, very similar to these. I love those as well. It's just, I've been getting these, but um, those Rupez pads work amazingly well. Also, and I'll link those in the description for you guys below. So basically, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. Get it nice and centered, good. And I will say guys, this hook and loop backing plate that they give you, it's very, very sticky. Just trying to remove a pad is kind of difficult. Um, now for my compound, I'm going to be using Masterson's Car Care, uh, their extreme cutting compound. They sent this out to me. They sent me a box of products to test out. I've been using this stuff a lot. Actually, I, I like it a lot. It seems to work really, really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe this down really quickly and then we'll start cutting into it and see what we can do. Now, this is not gonna be a single pass at all because this, this little combo is relatively aggressive. Um, so I'll definitely have to go through with a polish and remove anything from this. So, uh, but I'm gonna zoom you guys in on this and we'll get to it. Now, again, guys, do you remember, I'm using a one and a half amp hour battery. I have two of them and that's all I have right now. So I'm gonna be using the one and a half amp hour battery for the correction. I'll take this one off, put on the one, other one and a half hour, amp hour battery and start waxing my Ford Fairlane. Um, that way it's a fresh battery and we know just how far you can get with the one and a half. So here we go. So here's the section. I'm just gonna wipe this down really quickly. To get started, I'm actually gonna be using, I just did a review on this stuff, uh, just talking about the, the uh, delivery system, but this is from Glovebox, their new line of their own chemicals, Glovebox RX. This is the waterless wash. Um, they told me there's no protection in it, so let's just go ahead and see how it works. Spray bottle's good. Really good, actually, you have a spray or a stream option. But so let's just go ahead and do that. Wipe this up. Okay. Smells great. Smells really great. Um, as far as lubrication goes, it doesn't feel like the most lubrication to me, but uh, it seems to be doing a decent job. So. Um, so, so far so good. I will actually use this on my Fairlane when we prep that as well. And we're good to go. So we're gonna be running right here along this body line. Um, so here we go. First things first guys, I'm gonna saturate my pad. A couple drops. And then three good size ones. And then I like to do a couple little fillers just to saturate the pad in the beginning. I'm gonna go ahead and rub that in. Just spread the product around. Now I'm probably gonna get some fling because um, this panel is really tight, so I'll probably get some fling from it, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna start off on the low setting, and then we'll bump it up to the high, see what we got. So far, the machine seems to run pretty efficient, like, it runs smooth. I'm not having any issues with anything so far. Again, we're on the low setting right now, so we're bogging down a little bit on the harder edges but that's to be expected. Let me go ahead and bump it up. Slow it down a little bit. We'll take it down to about 5,000 and just let it sit there. This doesn't feel like 5,000 to me when we're comparing it to um, the map. Sorry about that guys. Battery just ran out on the camera, but I'm back. And I'm gonna go ahead and test it and see if I can bog it down. Usually on a hard edge, it'll bog. Yeah, completely stopped. Completely stopped there. Let me go ahead and get a white marker, mark it on here so you guys can see. Okay, I am back. So I didn't have a white marker, but I put some black marks about a quarter of the way around. So every quarter there's a mark. So you guys can see, we'll go ahead and turn this on again. So right now you can't see the marks and then you bog it and the marks are just sitting there slowly. So that means it's not doing its job. If it's not rotating, it's not correcting. So we're gonna have to bump it up. We can still get it to bog, but it's pretty difficult too, so not bad there.
All right, so let's go ahead and check that out. Ergonomics right now, working on a flat panel, guys, this is kind of making, the, the fact that it angles up is making my wrist kind of tweak, but I'm just kind of holding it back here and it's no issue. Um, we'll see how it works on a, on a horizontal or a vertical surface uh, once we're going around the fair lane. So let's go ahead and wipe up the cutting compound. And we've definitely induced some, some stuff uh, for sure, but it seems to be cleaning up nicely. Okay. Uh, let me grab my light and my GoPro again. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, there's still a bunch of hazing through there. That was probably, you know, too aggressive. Um, but it's definitely looking better already. Much, much better actually. And then we get up here, we didn't go over it too much. And you can see all that hazing there. So it pulled out a considerable amount already. Let's go ahead and go over to the polish now and see how we can do. Okay, so next up guys, I actually switched over to one of the pads that came with the Ryobi. Um, this is their compounding pad, I believe. But to me, it's no way is it a compounding compounding. It's too soft and too uh, smooth. So I'm gonna use it with my final polish here. Again, this is from Masterson's as well. Machine's working perfectly. You see the marks going around quickly. Pull it down, just try and finish this out. Again, it's wanting to bog now. You can see it's like not moving at all. So, operation wise, and that was it. Wow, that was at 5,800 that it's bogging that much. So for me, nine, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be running at that full 7,500 mark. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. We'll wipe this up and take another look. All right, you guys, so we just did our final passes through here. Again, this is just a quick pass with the new polisher and a couple polish, uh, compound polish combos. Um, every panel is a little bit different. I'm not going crazy on this, but just want to show you the results here of what I've got so far. This is the area that we did not work on at all. This is all the hazing and deeper scratches and stuff that were there. And as we work our way over, you can see we get super, super clear, really nice clarity. It did a fantastic job. Like, I'm surprised with the ability that it has, honestly. Um, again, like I said, that I was pretty much running at 7,500 that whole time. So keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, so far, I gotta say, I'm, I'm impressed with the unit. It's doing a good job. So um, again, there's a little bit more refinement for, for sure on this panel that I could do. Um, but just for a two, quick two passes like that, um, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep the fair lane now and then we'll switch over batteries and, and go to it and see how long it lasts if we can get around the whole car just waxing it. All right, you guys, so as I said, I'm gonna go ahead and go around my Ford fair lane. In order to get it prepped, just there's dirt. Uh, no, sorry, not so much dirt, but just dust. It's been sitting here. The interior is still out of it. I'm still waiting to get my interior back. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the Glovebox RX waterless wash on this to get it prepped. So here we go. I'm trying to test this out more and more and see what I think of it. All right guys, so I'm all done with the waterless wash. So really quickly, just first thoughts. Works really well, finishes out very, very nicely. Um, doesn't leave a ton of streaking behind. Again, uh, this is not a black car, it's, not, it's harder to see, but from what I can tell, it seems to be doing a good job. I'll continue to test it. Um, when I was using the towel that they give you, the thicker pile side, when I was wiping up with that in the beginning, it didn't feel like it had the most lubrication to me. Um, which lubrication is a big deal to me, especially with a waterless wash. You don't want to leave anything, you know, any friction when you're removing stuff. However, I flip the towel over to the shorter side. It's just a preference thing. When you have the longer pile, it is grabbing more things and getting them embedded into the towel. The other side, however, uh, does feel much more, you, you feel the lubrication in the product more. So it's just, I'm used to using about a 300 to 350 GSM pretty much across the board. Now the towel that I was using to go up and wipe up behind was a basic Costco towel. 
um, which, you know, Costco towels are, are great for what they are. You know, they, they, they do the job. However, they do have an edge to them, the surged edge. Surged edge. Um, and they do come with a gigantic tag that you have to rip out, which I don't like. So I actually have some towels on my website now. Uh, the, they're the towels that I use every day in my business. Um, I have red, black, red and blue. They're 300 GSM edgeless towels. They're my go-to. And then I also have these black 200 GSM towels, edgeless. And these are my go-to for windows. So make sure you guys are subscribed. I'm gonna be doing a window cleaning video on how I, my, my process of cleaning windows to a streak-free finish. Super easy, no chemicals, it's my go-to. Um, but these are my favorite towels for it. And these are thin, much thinner, guys. Like you can probably see, yeah, there you go. You can see right through it. Um, but because that low pile, it just really does a fantastic job of not leaving any lint behind and getting all of the smudges, any residue in the window, all that kind of stuff out of there. I love these for that. Just so you guys know, if you do wanna buy them on the site, they come in a 25 pack. Um, just know that when you do wash them, if you use heat, they will kind of get contorted. Um, still totally fine, I, I still use them after that. They just fold up a little bit wonky. They'll kind of fold up like that. Um, just, just know that going into it. Um, but regardless, guys, they're an inexpensive towel that you can use multiple times and they do a fantastic job on windows. Again, it's my go-to. So anyways, car is prepped. Product from Glovebox RX, Glovebox RX, very good. It seems, seems great. Um, very similar to other um, uh, waterless washes that I've used. So I, I like it a lot, actually. It seems to do a great job. Again, that delivery system is just super cool. So moving on, guys, we're gonna switch over to the other battery on that polisher. Now for going around the car, I'm just gonna be using the black finishing pad that the Ryobi came with, just so we can you know really test it out and see. I'm going to be using 3D's Poxy. Um, this is, I'll just tell you about it real quick. It says 3D Poxy is a hybrid, hybrid fossilized Montan wax designed to bond to the painted surface for a higher level of wax protection and a long lasting durable shine. I love this stuff. You can go around the whole car, let it cure while it's working and then go around and buff it off. They say to wait 15 minutes. I typically do the whole car and then start wiping it up afterwards. So I'm gonna be using that on the black pad that the Ryobi came with, and I'm going to be using, these are the towels that are on the site, 300 GSM, edgeless, great towels. I, these are my go-to, so um, let's see here. I'm just gonna leave them on top. I'm gonna switch over to the battery, and we'll get after it. Brand new battery here, guys. Okay. okay so as you can see, as I'm going around the car, I am going at a very, very fast pace. Again, this is just a wax application. Um, so I'm just applying as much wax as I need to keep going through the panels. Now you don't have to reapply too much. You don't need to put on a ton of wax. You're actually just gonna leave some on. As long as you're getting a nice thin surface across the board, you're good to go. Okay guys, so I got around the whole car. Uh, again, this is just wax, so I went quick. Um, but just a one and a half amp hour battery got me around it. However, guys, I will note the head of the unit is very, very warm. Like actually, if you touch where the, the, the this uncoated, where this portion where the plastic is not, it's actually hot. Um, so are you gonna wanna use this for full corrections? No, because I think it's gonna run too hot. Uh, there was also some vibration in the, in the machine. Again, I was running it pretty much full speed. Um, that's the only place where I really liked it um, without it bogging down. However, as a polisher that you're gonna be able to get plenty of life out of, because I'm only using a one and a half amp hour battery, guys. Again, if you're already a, uh, a Ryobi guy and have bigger batteries, for sure. But even with the one and a half amp hour battery, this thing is super light, super easy to work with. Uh, the ergonomics of it, when I was working on the vertical side panels, man, it was actually really, really comfortable. So I like that a lot. One thing I don't like, one thing I, I hate actually is this, the on off switch is, it's bad. You gotta, it, it's, I don't like it at all. It's a pain in the butt to push down, push up and then push up again to lock it in place. It's a silly design in my personal opinion. This also for me, um, the, the dial on the side for me guys, if I wanna go up in power, I wanna scroll up personally. But on this, it's the opposite. You need to scroll down to power it up. So. Again, something you get used to. Uh, one other thing that I don't like is 
uh, as you can see, when I'm working on the flat surfaces, like on the roof and I'm reaching, I'm holding it like this and just going across, right? And while I'm holding it, I am, I'm hitting where the button release is for the battery. It did not come apart, but I could feel it kind of compressing in a couple times. I was like, well, I want to make sure I don't accidentally do that. So final thoughts on this thing. Let's talk about the good. The good is super lightweight, price conscious, 199 bucks for the tool. Um, comes with pads, which are cool. They're, they're decent pads. They're, again, they're not aggressive, but they're good for basic stuff. Um, with the one and a half amp hour battery, I was able to wax the entire car, go around it, going around it. I don't know how much more life I have left. This one and a half amp hour battery has no indicators um, of how much life's left of the battery. So I don't know there. Uh, did a good job correcting uh, on that panel. It did a fantastic job. So no worries there. Also guys, ergonomics of the thing, it's good. Really comfortable to hold. Again, lightweight with that one and a half amp hour battery. Obviously with the bigger battery, it's gonna be heavier, but you're gonna get more life out of it. And now let's talk about the bad. The bad, number one is, for me personally guys, the only way I like using it is all the way pegged at 7,500. Um, it didn't feel, again, moving it down to like 55, 5,800, didn't feel as powerful as the DeWalt did at 5,500. So I don't, you know, I, I don't know how they rated that. And maybe because the throw is smaller. So I don't know, but um, it just didn't feel quite as powerful. Also the DeWalt, this thing ran very smooth. Um, you do get some vibration after a little bit of time. Uh, but one of the biggest downsides is, is the head unit gets very, very hot. So not ideal there. Like it's, it's still warm and I haven't used this. It's been about 10 minutes since I used this. It's still warm. Uh, another negative is this goofy on off switch. I do not like that. The indicator on the left here is not ideal. And uh, that's pretty much it. Overall, I think it's a fantastic machine. For the price, if you're a Ryobi guy and you have batteries, as a professional, would I use this? Probably not just because it gets too hot after a little bit of time. So, but uh, as the DIYer, if you're at home or if you are a pro and you want a backup or something that's easy to just grab and do something quickly with, this is a great choice. I, I like it. I'm going to keep it. Um, definitely a great little tool. So that is it, guys. I hope that helps you. Um, again, I've seen this thing out for some time now. I really, really want, I was excited to try it out. And I would say it performed better than I actually thought it would. So I was, when I first saw it, I was thinking it's just going to bog down really, really bad. Battery's not going to last. Um, again, with just a one and a half amp hour battery, I got around the whole car waxing it. So that's it, guys. I hope that helps. Please make sure to like the video. Make sure you're subscribed. Turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. We'll see you on the next one.